Hello everybody, hope you're well. In this week's video, we're gonna be talking about exposure bracketing in architecture photography, and in particular in the Canon R5, because that's what I shoot with. We're still in Italy in our ongoing series. Let's shoot on with a video. Let's do it. For those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin, and this is me. I'm an architecture and interior photographer from the UK, and I love shooting abandoned places, relics, ruins, hidden gems, and ghost towns, as well as off the beaten path locations all around the world. I'm posting new videos every Sunday, so why don't you join me for the ride by subscribing. You can also check out my website in the description below. So by this stage, I'd been in Italy for two weeks and I took some personal time then to visit Genoa, Rome and Naples, of course relaxing but also taking in the food and wine prior to continuing the filming. And in this video we finally arrive in a tiny town after that relaxing period in central Italy, the town which rises from a mountain setting that is among abundant chestnut forests of northern Lazio. The town is filled with narrow streets with a medieval core and yet is surrounded by a more classical open setting packed with cafes and small eateries, typical Italian. It's a lovely peaceful small town that has yet to become known for mass tourism or actually any tourism at all to be honest and therefore is incredibly pleasant. The town is also filled with beautiful palaces of the Renaissance period, including the place that we visit in this video, a palace built in the 16th century. Unfortunately, it fell into abandonment and can only now be visited on special occasions. Photographing such spaces is a dream for many photographers, I'm sure, but to do so, it requires a certain set of skills, and one of those skills is exposure bracketing. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at what makes both a good architecture photographer, as well as a closer look at the skill of exposure bracketing and setting it up in camera. Okay, welcome to the episode. We are in a disused palace in the heart of Italy. It's got interesting features, details and colours, and there's a couple of compositions in here that I'd like to obtain. So any architecture shoot needs to tell a story, and the images themselves need to show how the building has been integrated into a setting, whether it be urban or rural. All of this needs to be carefully timed to ensure the best use of light, or in my case, usually the complete lack of light. Photographing architecture takes rigorous planning, especially if it's in, say, a commercial environment where you've got a limited amount of time to photograph the subject and maybe multiple rooms as well. All of this means it's even more important to be prepared and have the skills and knowledge to understand what it is that you're trying to you know, undertake and how the shoot will run. The artistic approach to architecture photography is something that comes natural to some people. Straight lines, leading lines, colours, detail. Other people, maybe not so much, maybe it's more of a struggle. It's particularly a little bit easier, especially if you come from a design background, say, or even an architecture background, that would make photographing these spaces even easier for you. The technical aspect of photographing architecture, of course, can be learned over time. But if you want to become an expert in your field, then some of this needs to become instinctive so that you can react to stuff as it happens there and then. So in architecture, symmetry is your friend. I love finding the central point of a building and capturing the most symmetrical shot I can. It's pleasing to the eye and impactful as well. And it's kind of called a one-point perspective uh, when we're shooting straight, and I like to get straight lines in camera as much as possible. The thing is, is it's difficult to photograph in here sometimes because it's got contrasting light. Now, first of all, I've already timed it well. So I've come later in the afternoon, the light is dipping around the side of the palace. But even still, 
one of the compositions that we're looking at, one of the images that we want to take, has got a very contrasting scene. The dynamic range in there is quite bright parts, and then there's some really dark parts as well. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to do exposure bracketing in camera, and we're going to have a look at setting that up. I'm going to show you how to do that, and then we're going to capture the scene. Okay, so here we have a kind of broken symmetry with the rubble falling in on the left-hand side of the frame and the door on the right. It's still got a one-point perspective over my shoulder here, and it works in exactly the same way. Let's take some photos. Okay then, so we need to expose your bracket. Let's first of all then look at how we set that up in my Canon R5. It's similar on all cameras. You'll have a mode in there that you need to look at, but let's have a look at doing it here on my Canon now. Okay, so first of all, look, I'm shooting on manual mode. That goes without saying. So I changed my modes here in the top of the camera. We use the, uh, the mode dial up on the top right here, and we can actually then change the modes, and I'm in manual. Just the first thing to mention. The second thing is there's two ways in the Canon R5 to actually act pull this together. So the first thing we want to look at is we can press the info button a couple of times to get to this menu. This is pretty much your overview menu. It's got all of your settings on here, all of your information. And what we want to do is we want to press the Q button. We can then highlight these menus and we can come up here to Exposure Compensation or AEB settings. What we, what we can then do is we can actually uh, rotate this by using our shutter speed rolling switch at the top. We can just roll the shutter and actually split the brackets into three. So here we're setting our scene up to one stop apart and then here would be two stops apart up on the top here which i think for this scene two stops apart is probably enough we could even go maybe just under that so that's probably where we're going to sit the next thing as well is of course we probably want our iso nice and low 100 and i'm going to bring my shutter speed back up so now we're going to have a sh one shot that's one stop exposed one stop over just a little bit under zero and then just under two F8, of course, goes without saying. We've talked about that already. And my shutter speed is then determined by what we're seeing on the screen. If we look at the screen now, we can see our brightest exposure is still probably quite bright. So we could even bring that down one step further. We could then adjust that on live view. And that's why we're using live view. But what happens if we want to have more than three brackets? What happens if we want to have five? Let's turn that off for a second. So we'll go back into here, press the Q button, we roll it back. What happens if we want to have five? Well, we press the menu, and what we want to look for is if we go all the way to the end, so if we actually go to the section which is listed as the orange section in my camera, we can go down here to number of bracketed shots, and I've got three selected currently, but we could do two, five, or seven. So let's look at five now. Once you press the shot, just hover on the shot button, you press it, it goes back to this menu again, and what we can do is we can just bring that up, roll it out, just as before, same thing, and you can see here we've now selected five. If we were now to shoot that, we'd have five shots ready to roll. Okay, so there's one more thing we've got to look at before we go any further, and that is activating our two second timer. That eliminates any wobble that you might get on your tripod, on your camera. It allows you to let go, two second timer kicks in, and then it shoots the images and get the sharpest possible results. How do we do that? Same as before, we press the info button, we go to this menu, press the Q again, you've got a bunch of settings here. Here on this one, you've got high speed continuous selected. If we go into there on the menu, in this menu you've got single shooting, high speed, all these other options, but then finally you've got self timer, 10 second remote. So this will put a 10 second timer on if you have a very unsturdy tripod, I recommend doing that. Or finally you've got two second timer. For me on my sturdy tripod, my Benro, of course a two second timer is probably adequate for this scene and this shot. So I'll select that and we're on. You need to make sure that this is activated. Any remote, remote shooting on a wire, 10 second timer or a two second timer, otherwise the automatic exposure bracketing will not take place. So it's very, very important to do that. And there we are, we're all set up. We've got our three brackets. We've got F8 selected and we've got our two second timer on. If we were to press shoot now, just as a test subject, it would kick in two seconds and then start shooting our shots, just like that. Okay, so I'm pretty much good to go. As you can see here, I've got my camera on the tripod. The tripod is maximum height and the center column is right up high. 
but it's nice and sturdy. I've fixed it nice and sturdy so it's, the camera's not going to wobble about or go anywhere. The next thing is I've positioned my camera in, a, in such a way that this door frame is not in my framing, you know, not in the top of the frame of the shot in the composition. I then open this door to allow as much available natural light to come into the scene as possible. And of course, if you're going to do this, make sure there's no shadow going to take place on the floor here. There would be if I was a bit further forwards, but as it is where the camera's sitting, there is no shadow being cast. So we're kind of lined up. You can kind of see there the composition that I've got. First things that I've checked all the way through the frame is I've checked that make sure that all of this lines up. Let me brighten that up so you can see what we're looking at. And we'll get rid of all that stuff off the screen. You can see here that I've positioned it. So we've got a little gap here on the right hand side between the frame and the door. Obviously, if I tilt this, we can we, we really are kind of like making sure that everything is uh, lined up correctly. Nice and straight. Same distance on the other side as well. And also the other thing to bear in mind is there is a little skylight just appearing in at the very top of the frame. That all helps us to line up. I've also used the two white lines. You can see them here, the two cream lines in the frame to be able to position everything correct. So my brightest exposure is here, you can see. And then when I focus, which is going to be up here, we're going to end up having just a tiny bit over a stop. So I'm on my brightest exposure. I don't want this to be burnt out. That's the thing I don't want burnt out. So that's going to be my brightest exposure and that's pretty much where I'm going to be focusing. Okay, so this is the frame that I'm basically looking at. And what you can see here is I've positioned it so you've got a little bit of gap between the door frame and the wall there. And I've used the top section here to position my camera to line everything up. I've also then used the walls as well to make sure that everything's nice and straight in camera. Okay, so here you're pretty much looking at my framing um, for, my, for my shot. Of course, um, you can check all of this through the scene by zooming in. I always find that's a really good trick to make sure that everything's straight. And you can see here, my lines are pretty much bang on as we go wider, we're there or thereabouts. Of course, it's cropped a little bit here for video, um, but you get the idea. It's pretty much like lined up correctly and everything is pretty much straight as you can see. Okay, so one more thing to note is I always start with my brightest exposure and work backwards. So if I'm un unsure, what I do is I rotate the shutter speed dial on the top of the camera and actually position it so that the br I look at the brightest exposure and then I make sure that there's no burnt out highlights in the, in the actual image and then I roll it back if there is. So if I was up here, of course, the window outside, the, the rubble is overexposed, the back walls losing details. I don't need this image. What I need is the brightest exposure. So I need probably this one is absolutely fine for, in, for the inside and then we can work back from there. So there's one bracket, that would be the second one, and then of course we would then have the third one here. So that's all we need, and actually I'm gonna do a stop, a stop in a bit, a stop in a third part. So we're pretty much set up, I'm gonna take the shot now. You've seen my composition, I've lined everything up. Now it's just a case of shooting. We're gonna press the shutter button. I'm gonna focus about a third of the way into the scene, but it could even be towards the back wall, it's irrelevant at this point. At F8, everything will be nice and sharp. Two second timer kicks in, and then our three brackets. About a stop and a half apart, as I said, and there's our shot. We're gonna just check those on the, on the screen here. Okay, there's our three brackets. So a stop and a half apart. I've checked them. They look absolutely fine. There's some nice light dropping in. You can just about see into a distant room, which looks quite cool. We might work on that a little bit. And the colours in here are fantastic. So, yeah. If any of you have ever seen any of my Camera Club talks, you'll know that I talk about complementary colours a lot in that first talk, Abandoned Architecture. And in this room, it is a classic example of that. Gold, yellow and blue hues. A real nice combination. However, with a single exposure blend using just Lightroom's edit in HDR mode function, the outside segment does look a little fake to me. The greens and the lighting look a bit odd and it's difficult to get the balance right. So I should just sit down at some point and edit another version in Photoshop, simply blending in the underexposed parts with a layer mask. I also provided another crop, portrait orientation as you can see here and in this one I've cut that doorway off. If you want to support this channel, you can do so by purchasing one of the books listed in the description below.
Okay, so that is all for this week. However, we have more to come from this exact location in Italy next weekend. So stay tuned for that video, reaching high ceilings in large spaces. Until then, please leave any comments if you have any below. And of course, if you haven't done so already, please subscribe and maybe share this video with a friend. Until then, enjoy the rest of your weekend. Have a great time. See ya.